Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. It's time to look at the best graphics card to buy in September 2024. We're gonna cover every budget level from the best graphics card under $200 all the way up to the best 1440p graphics card and best 4K graphics card in 2024. And we'll look at upcoming graphics card launches and sales so that you can get the best value GPU in 2024. Remember, if you get value out of this video, please give it a like so it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And Windows 10 can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. Let's start off by playing everyone's favorite game, should you buy now or should you wait? Well, let's take a quick look at the current generation graphics card prices. Starting off with NVIDIA GeForce graphics card side, we're pricing for the RTX 4000 series cards at the higher end. So the RTX 4090, RTX 4080 Super, and RTX 4070 Ti Super, they were largely unchanged in September. Moving down, we see the RTX 4070 Super is up about $20 from its low price in July, with mixed pricing moves for the rest of the stack, including the RTX 4060 Ti, 16 gigabyte, and the RTX 4060. And previous generation GPUs like the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte were unchanged. While the RTX 3050 8 gigabyte graphics card, it's back to its lowest price ever from July. Moving over to the AMD Radeon side, prices for AMD's Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs is largely down after peaking back up in August. Now this August speed bump in prices happens every year as manufacturer incentives from Amazon Prime Day in July basically expire and they don't come back until near the beginning of September. So it's welcome to see slightly lower prices on the RX 7900 XTX, RX 7900 XT, RX 7900 GRE, and the 7800 XT, as well as the 7600 XT. Meanwhile, higher prices on the RX 7700 XT, that seems to be a result of lower price units temporarily selling out. Meanwhile, the last generation insane value RX 6800 non-XT, it sold out in the US, and the RX 6750 XT is very close to selling out with just a handful of models left. Now, over on the Intel side, we see a welcome decrease in graphics card prices for the ARC A770 16 gigabyte and the ARC A750 8 gigabyte graphics cards. But I'm really missing the ARC A580 at $149, which was an easy recommend for those looking for the $150 best graphics card. With current GPU prices edging back down to match their lowest levels this generation, should you buy now or should you wait for a new graphics card? We still aren't expecting the RTX 5090 and RTX 5080 graphics card launch before the first quarter of next year, meaning that mid-range RTX 5070 and RTX 5060 GPUs they're quite a long ways away, but Nvidia could always surprise us with a launch this fall. We did get a rumor from Moore's Law is Dead claiming that AMD's RDNA 4 graphics card, so that'd be their RX 8000 series lineup, were gonna launch this fall rather than early next year as we had previously heard. And those GPUs are supposedly going to bring RX 7900 XT performance down to the $500 level, though everything here is just rumors. I still haven't seen anyone else chime in to support this claim of an early RX 8000 series GPU launch, and the details on pricing and performance are still very sketchy. We were also expecting Intel's Battle Mage graphics cards this fall, but with their recent financial shakeup and layoffs, it's really anyone's guess what the heck's going on over there, but Intel's recent showcase of their new XE2 graphics cores in their Lunar Lake mobile CPU announcement, they did look quite good. In terms of sales coming up, we typically have another Amazon Prime Day in early to mid-October, although Amazon really never announces it this early. We're also starting to get towards Black Friday in late November. Now we've previously looked at these sales and GPU discounts range between five and 10% maximum. Of course, other components like CPUs, motherboards, and SSDs, they see much bigger discounts, but outside of a couple of unicorn sales or ultra closeouts like we saw with the RX 6750 XT for Amazon's July Prime Day, they generally aren't worth waiting for. Of course, right now, both NVIDIA and AMD are offering free game promotions at participating retailers. NVIDIA is bundling Star Wars Outlaws with a purchase of an RTX 4070 or higher value graphics card if you purchase it by September 19th. And AMD is offering a two game bundle of Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2 and the Unknown 9 Awakening games to anyone buying a Radeon RX 7600 XT or higher GPU 
or a Ryzen 7700 or 9700X or higher CPU by October 5th. Intel continues to offer Assassin's Creed Shadows to those buying ARC A580, A750, and A770 GPUs by September 15th. Jumping into the best graphics card under $200 in September 2024, of course, eight gigabyte graphics cards are really 1080p budget options, and I'd recommend at least 12 gigs for a 1440p gaming, but the data should illustrate the performance difference between these GPUs. And honestly, it's hard to get away from the AMD Radeon RX 6600 for about $190 US. Now, at this price, this point, we still do not have any new graphics cards with more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. So we're just looking for the fastest GPU for our money. I will say recent testing by Hardware on Box of over 200 games on Intel Arc GPUs, it's given me a lot more confidence to recommend them to budget buyers. And honestly, while you might have to wait a couple of weeks to get a driver for a brand new game release, you might decide that that's worth putting up with to save $10 and get 10% more performance. On the other hand, it's hard to recommend the ARC A580 at only $10 less, and the RTX 3050 eight gigabyte, it's so low performance at 1440p or heck, even 1080p, I just recommend buyers just forget it exists. If you do have a little extra money to spend, you could consider the RX 6650 XC eight gigabyte though it exists in kind of a weird zone where it's an expensive eight gigabyte GPU, but almost in the same price class as the cheapest 12 or even 16 gigabyte GPUs. Moving over to the best graphics card under $300, we'll extend that to $310 just to include the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte. Now these are really are the best budget 1440p GPUs on the market right now. And honestly, the standout here, it's still the RX 6750 XT and RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte GPUs at just under $300. That is if you can still find them in your region. They absolutely crush any other GPU in this price class in terms of performance. The 12 gigabytes of VRAM is fantastic at just under $300. And overall, they are just insane values. Though even in the US, they're becoming extremely rare. Now, if you don't have one of those graphics cards and you have closer to $250 to spend, my default, honestly, probably just go out and pick up an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte graphics card as the best GPU under $300. It has 60 average FPS across a wide range of harder to run single player titles at ultra details. And obviously you'll get much higher frame rates by going down to high settings, or if you're playing competitive multiplayer titles that are easier to run. At $265 for the cheapest model, that makes it a good value recommendation over the RTX 4060 and RX 7600, which are bottlenecked by only having eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now the ARC A770 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's also worthy of consideration, though not having those day one drivers for new game launches, that's gonna be your trade-off. And if I had just about $300, I'd definitely reach up and grab the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte GPU over either one of the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte or the ARC 8770. Remember at these performance levels, you really want to value raw rasterization along with getting enough VRAM. And the 7600 XT definitely has that even though I'd love for it to be a little bit cheaper. Jumping up to the best graphics card under $400, and we really only add the excellent value RX 7700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU for around $385, and the terrible value RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte model for around $375. Now, sadly, the RX 6800 non-XT, it's finally sold out in the US, so ripped to an insane value GPU, really the best 1440p GPU in 2024. But the choice here, it's still an absolute no brainer as the RX 7700 XT 12 gigabyte graphics card, it's 20% faster than the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte for essentially the same price and offers 12 gigs of VRAM versus eight gigabytes on the RTX 4060 Ti. Nvidia didn't even bother to call the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte a 1440p GPU at launch. So if you wanna play at 1440p high frame rates, the RX 7700 XT is superior in just about every way. And this is a major hole in the market for Nvidia's lineup. Jumping into the best graphics card between $400 and $600 US, it adds in the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte around $430, the RX 7800 XT 16GB GPU for around $470, the RX 7900 GRE 16GB for $523, and the RTX 4070 graphics card with a silly price of $540, including the newer models with slower VRAM. 
And we also get the RTX 4070 Super 12 gigabyte, still hanging on very close to its MSRP at $589. Now, given how slow and how high priced they are for the performance, I think we can immediately cross out the RTX 4070 and the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte GPUs. So what's left is a battle of the best 1440p graphics card in the mid range. And it comes down to the RX 7800 XC 16 gigabyte and RX 7900 GRE 16 gigabyte versus the RTX 4070 Super 12 gigabyte. Now, just looking at raw rasterization at 1440p, the 7900 GRE is slightly faster than the RTX 4070 Super for around $60 less. And the 4070 Super is about 10% faster than the RX 7800 XT, but it costs $120 more and it has less VRAM. This makes it really hard to recommend the RTX 4070 Super even if you want to consider ray tracing performance, as recent testing has shown that the extra VRAM required to use ray tracing and DLSS to get good frame rates, it often bumps into the 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer. So if you really want ray tracing as an enthusiast level, you should really consider the higher end GPUs. The other issue, it's honestly the VRAM. And if you consider how many people now regret buying something like an RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti 8 gigabyte GPU, or even an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte GPU a couple years ago, instead of a 16 gigabyte RX 6800 or RX 6800 XT, it just feels like history might be repeating itself for higher end GPUs. And yes, $600, that's a high end GPU. To me, the easy choice here is to get either the RX 7800 XT or 7900 GRE, and I prefer reaching up to the 7900 GRE if you can, because while you can always add another SSD to your PC for about $60, you can't just add $60 to your GPU later to make it faster. So my advice, just price that in right now. Then we move to the best graphics card between $650 and $1,000. And here we have the RX 7900 XT 20GB for around $680, the RTX 47 Ti Super 16 gigabyte for around $780 and the RX 7900 XTX for around $900, not to mention the RTX 4080 Super 16 gigabyte for around $959 in the US. Now, the closer we get to $1,000 or over, the more hesitant I am to make a strong recommendation, knowing that we're going to have a new generation coming within the next four months, possibly even a little sooner. But I think if you want something right now, the RX 7900 XT 20 gigabyte it's still a pretty good value, even with RDNA 4 coming. It has 4K levels of performance. I mean, I play games on an RX 7900 XT all the time on a 4K 144Hz gaming monitor, and I have a great experience. I'd also add in that I play on a PC with an RTX 4090, and I use DLSS on that one, and FSR on the AMD GPU, and honestly, at 4K, I personally cannot tell the difference between FSR and DLSS upscalers. If you are a ray tracing enthusiast, then I think the RTX 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabyte it's the obvious go-to here. I've said in the past that this one really feels like the 80 class card we used to get from Nvidia, and it's priced at only $100 more than the RTX 3080 10 gigabyte when it launched, which seems pretty reasonable for a top-end GPU. Nvidia continues to offer better ray tracing performance in the small number of titles, which heavily use RT effects like Cyberpunk 2077 or Alan Wake 2. I think both the RTX 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX, they're fine if you want to spend a little bit more for another tier of performance. But again, we're now treading in a territory where we're definitely about to get new high-end GPUs, so keep that in mind. That leaves the best graphics card of 2024, which honestly <laughs> remains the RTX 4090 24 gigabyte GPU at around $1,700 US for the cheapest of models. And they go up substantially from there. Now, it's hard to recommend this GPU even with it offering a substantial performance uplift over basically anything else out there. And that's largely due to the fact that we're expecting the RTX 5090 to likely be 40% or more faster and the RTX 5080 to be roughly equal to the RTX 4090. But of course, we have no ideas on pricing. Given how much Nvidia is making on AI, in their latest earnings report, their data center AI revenue was 10 times as big as their gaming revenue. It's hard to believe that Nvidia is gonna do anything other than charge a huge price premium for these GPUs. And we could see the 5090 scalp for months like the RTX 4090 was at launch. So maybe picking up an RTX 4090 isn't that bad of an idea. All these graphics cards are linked down in the video description. So click on those links to check out current pricing and availability in your region. Remember, if you got value out of this video, please give a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content like our recent Ryzen 7600X and Ryzen 7600 build guide video where we show you how to put together a high performance 1440p or 4K gaming PC for between $950 and $1,400. 
Check it out, and we'll catch you on the next one.